Greetings and welcome to Growth Hacking Secrets. I'm your host, Mohammed Sadiq from Atlanta, Georgia, and the co author of New Success Secrets, available on Amazon. On this episode, we have a special guest, Michael Lejeune. Michael is the host of Game Changers for Government Contractors, and his podcast has done, done over 100,000 downloads. Please join me to give a warm welcome to our guest, Michael Lejeune. Michael, welcome. Hi, Mohammed. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. I appreciate. Thank you for the opportunity. Your podcast is so unique. It's for you know game changes for government contractors. It's like a very highly niche people who are yep. looking for do a business with the federal government. You are teaching them how to do the right way to win those contracts. Yeah, yeah. You know, I uh, I don't know if you you've heard you probably heard this back in the day. Yeah, there's riches and niches, right? So if you're talking about success <laughs> secrets, it's the 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 cl- the smaller you can get that niche, the better, so that you can easily identify who your target customers are. So that's yeah. uh, we we love being so niche that it's very easy to identify them, and it's very easy for them to identify us. So yeah. wonderful, Michael. Let me start with this. Where were you? What happened? Who you were surrounded with? that inspired you to get into this niche of government contractors? Uh, you know, I actually got into this niche totally by accident. Uh, about 20 something years ago, I find myself uh, with a few job opportunities. So I went in the military. Out of the military, I had less opportunities on the way out and uh, just wound up in government contracting and just kind of found that I was good at it. I understood it, it wasn't that hard. Uh, but a lot of other people struggled with it. And so over the years, a uh, buddy of mine who I met early on in that time, we got together and started kind of building our own systems and things for how we did it. And next thing we know, you know, we fast forward almost 20 years later, and he and I have a business together where, you know, we help other government contractors figure out the market. So initially it was completely by accident. And uh, in fact, when I got out of it initially, Um, almost 20 years ago, I got out of the market for a little while because I really wanted to focus on book writing and podcasting and all those kind of things and um, decided, hey, you know, instead of making a podcast and book and all this kind of stuff for just everybody, I'm going to niche it down and just make it for what I know, which is government contracting. And so we've been in, we've been in the niche ever since. So. No, that's, that's a great accident. You know, the stumble upon yeah. 20 years ago is a great accident. Most of the time, the accidents are not good. How about this is a good one? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I've had many a bad ones. So I'm glad to have yeah. some really good ones too. So, yeah. Wonderful. Michael, what are the top three missteps to avoid when you're getting into a contracts with the governments? Well, I, I think one of the first ones is when people are new to the government, they often come out of the gate pretty fast and they'll win a con. Oh, I can do this. So they'll quit their day job and they'll just start going. And they really have to understand it takes three to five years to learn the market and get the education you need. So you don't just jump out of your day job into this and you know become a success. It rarely, rarely happens. So being prepared for it is the biggest thing. So don't just jump into it. Be prepared for it when you go into it. That I'd say that that's the first one, being prepared because most people aren't. The next one is most people are told, and this is just bad information in the market, that if you have status, so your 8A, your your service disabled veteran, your woman owned, your minority owned, if you have any sort of thing like that, people think that the money is just going to rain down from the heavens. Oh, I've got this status and all I got to do is tell people and they're just going to give me contracts. It doesn't work that way. In fact, it's one of the worst things you can do because it shows the government you really don't know what you're doing and you're basing your value on your status, not the value you actually provide to the customer. So a lot of these companies do this and think, hey, this is going to work and it doesn't. So going in and and thinking that the status is going to be everything you need, huge mistake for a lot of people. Um, Another thing uh, with that, kind of a, a part two to that one is they, they get their, their certification too early in the 8A program and they don't even understand what they're doing in the business and they waste years on it. It's the only certification that has a time limit. So I always recommend for people when they come in, take two, three, four years, figure out the business, then get your 8A and then fully utilize it or else that program's gone. So th- those are uh, a couple of others. The only other thing I'd add to that is uh, people don't understand the time it takes to win a contract and so they don't have the cash flow. And so if you're in the commercial world, you can actually knock on doors, make phone calls, whatever you got to do, win some contracts today, this week, this month, 
when you're in the government, there may not be a contract that comes out for two or three months. Then they may take two or three months to evaluate the responses. Then they may award the contract. Then they may take two or three months to start the work on it. Then it takes 60 days to start paying invoices. So you could win a contract today and not see a dollar of that for three, six, nine months. You could you could see a big contract and try to bid on it. And it takes months to even get that closed. I was on a multi-billion dollar contract a couple of years ago. It was protested before it even came out. It took us two and a half years to see a dollar out of that contract. So people underestimate how long it's going to take to get the money once they actually even win. So those are the three big ones. Yeah, so it looks like in a, when you're in a government contracting, you need to take care of your cash flow on a side first before you really get into this is like a two 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 step process. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. One one of the first things I recommend for new business owners, kind of a success secret, if you will, is having a credit line. If you're trying to onboard employees, you need cash flow because the government's not going to pay day one. So you're going to have to pay anywhere from two to three, maybe even four or five paychecks of that employee before you get your first invoice paid by the government. And so you probably don't want to put that on a credit card. You're going to need a credit line from your bank in order to make that happen. Yeah, wonderful. No, this is great. So, Michael, let's switch the size. So what are your top three success secrets in a government contracting? Yeah, I, I would say the first one is to understand the value you provide. If you can clearly articulate how you help customers, like very clearly what you do and like by the numbers, not just, hey, we operate with integrity and excellence and great customer service. That's a standard. How do you actually help your customers? And, and very clearly articulate that. Once you do that, it helps them understand why they should work with you. So that's number one, clearly articulating your value. Number two is not being afraid to pick up the phone and call people. I, I see too many people that say, well, I'm just going to email them. But that, that doesn't cut it. You have to understand the government is very, very old school. There's a lot of things in the government that haven't changed in 50 years. And so you have this older generation that has taught the newer generation. So even if the new generation of contracting officers are in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, they've been taught by an older generation that really relies heavily on picking up that phone, having a conversation, making an introduction, and, and doing that sort of thing. And so you can't have any fear. You've got to pick up the phone, have a conversation with them, and actually start moving the ball forward. So that, that's a big thing. And with that, I would also recommend do your research before you call them. Don't just call them out of the blue. Do a little bit of research who they are. Go visit their LinkedIn. If their agency has a forecast, that sort of stuff, do a little bit of research. It doesn't take a lot of time. And then the third one is to really start building out your pipeline. I mentioned this earlier. You know, It takes so long to win your first government contract that you just need to start putting things in your pipeline and, and managing it with a CRM so that you know, hey, in three months, this big RFP is coming out. Hey, in six months, this big RFP is coming out. Build a 12 to 24 month pipeline and keep updating it regularly. Update it at least once a week with new opportunities. There's new opportunities every single day that the government is putting out there. It's the only customer that puts out their opportunities publicly every single day. And there's dozens, if not hundreds that come out every day. So be very focused on what you're doing. Look at those new opportunities, add them to your pipeline and make that a habit that you're growing that pipeline every single week in your business. If you do those three things, you're going to see some sec success in here very quickly. So. So it seems like this is like a teamwork. It's not a one-person work because someone is focusing on new opportunities. Someone is focusing on managing the back office, and you know, all and someone is actually making calls. Is yeah. it like, a, like people teamwork? Is it a yeah. one person can do it all? You know, it's great if you have a team, but I talk to a lot of folks that it's just them. It's just them, and they're really they're they're probably that's why I said earlier. You know, you're probably going to be working 50, 60 hours a week doing this if you're trying to make it go. Uh, initially, and if you don't have the cash flow to hire somebody, that's a lot of work. And you you just nailed it. You know, you're you're making phone calls, you're you're uh, updating stuff, you're responding RFPs, you're calling teaming partners. That's a big strategy that we didn't talk about. Is working with others that already have access to your customer and starting to leverage different values that you bring to them to make that happen. And those are phone calls, those are relationships. That's time that you got to take to do that plus the research you need to do. So yeah, if, if you can afford one or two people, even some part-time folks, some virtual assistants, that'll greatly help. But if not, you know, you've got to be very disciplined to make sure you're doing all those roles by yourself. 
this is good this is a great uh, value how the growth hacking secrets uh, community people are watching this now can support you michael yeah um the, the biggest way is you can, you can always follow us uh on our podcast you can go listen to that it's on soundcloud so game changers for government contractors you can get it on any podcasting app amazon itunes spotify doesn't matter it's on it's on all, all those places you can connect with me on linkedin if you got a question you can ping me with your question on linkedin and then if you're just trying to get in the market I recommend you go grab a couple of our books. We've got three Amazon number one bestsellers in this. Um, you can just look me up and and you'll find all of those. We just had a new one come out last week, but go grab one of the books, go listen to the podcast, connect with me on LinkedIn, do that. And again, you have questions, I'm here to help. And so just reach out anytime. Yeah, wonderful. And a good starting point would be go on a website, rsmfederal.com. It's on your screen, rsmfederal.com. Thank you so much, Michael. Yeah. Appreciate You're it welcome. Uh, Thank very you. much. As we are about to wrap up, I like to ask uh, this question to almost every guest. What would you say to your best friend about Growth Hacking Secret Show as a guest experience you have today? No, no, I, re I really appreciate coming on. And I, I think, uh, you know, everybody needs to be out there doing shows like this. It's great when you are able to participate in helping others that are looking for just these quick little secrets. So I appreciate this. It was a great interview, simple, simple questions, a lot of fun. And I appreciate you for having me on. Yeah, thank you so much. Michael, what would you say as a final word? You know, government contracting is not hard. It, it's not hard. It just takes a little bit of education, some patience. And if I can do it, almost anybody can do it. So it's not that hard, but it can be frustrating. Seek some help. Don't just sit and wait and try to figure it out. There's people like myself who have done this and we figured it out. So don't try to go in alone, but uh, it's not hard. You just got to figure it out. And then it's just repetition, just doing the same thing over and over again. So, but it's not hard. Yeah. My last word is don't go, uh, don't go alone. Because rsmfederal.com yeah. is there to help you to get where you want to go, get into federal contracting. With that, Michael, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us today. On the behalf of Growth Hacking Secrets community and our entire team, we really appreciate you. This is Mohammed Siddiq yeah. signing off from Atlanta, Georgia. Until the next episode, all good wishes.